Hello, everyone. My name is Mabel Akwe. I'm a senior policy analyst and also the head of monitoring and evaluation at the Africa Center for Energy Policy, ASE, which is based in Ghana, but operates across the region with specific focus on energy and extractive issues. I'm happy to be here and be your assist you to go through this course. I want to welcome you all to the course Fundamentals to Natural Resource Governance. So 2022, this year, we have six models under this course. We have model one, which is the mining life cycle. We have a number of objectives that we hope to achieve at the end of model one. That is to expose participants to a broader overview of the mining sector. We also want to help you to understand the mining life cycle and the different stages that it involves. And some of the key issues, the requirements in terms of legal requirements and the responsibilities of all stakeholders involved at each stage of the mine life cycle. So table of content, you'll be seeing the main stages of the mining life cycle and as I mentioned, some key issues and the requisite requirements required legally and from stakeholders in order to have um, an all mine life cycle to ensure an effective mine operation. We also have our second model, which looks at the environmental and social impacts of mining activities. So participants will be exposed to the broader understanding of the impacts of extractive activities on the environment and also the interactions between extractive companies and extractive activities and the social and economic lives of the uh, um, communities that are directly interfaced with the mining activity. So we'll be looking at the impacts of extractive activities, that has the environmental impact, the social impact, and the economic impact. And also, we will also look at the impact management measures. That is, after knowing how the extractive activity will impact the various stakeholders, including the environment, what are the mitigation measures to manage this impact? So you go through the impact assessments the, and the environmental management plan. We have a number of um, references and reading lists that you can also assess at your self-paced time to grant you deeper understanding of the things or of the presentations that you'll be exposed to. The third model looks at um, local content. That's the various linkages, investment and diversification of um, natural resources for um, resource rich economies. So participants will have the opportunity to understand the various opportunities to transform the limited resources into sustainable development. That's how do you take advantage of the um, presented by the various activities, the stages, and within the value chain of the mining, of the mining supply chain, in order to optimize the gains you get from the extractive activity beyond the fiscal gains. Because the fiscal gains are usually in taxes, export proceeds, which significant portion is repatriated back to the, the, the home country of the extractive uh, company. However, of more essence is how much is retained here. And that is the rule that local content can do. So we also highlight the challenges and the strategies to be able to make gains or to be able to use extractive activities to industrialize through diversification. So here we believe the content includes opportunities and requirements, challenges, and the current gaps that um, impede us from making the most of the value chain of mining activities as presented to us, the possible strategies 
that we can undertake to make the most of it, the local content and all that. As usual, you will have your reading list to help you better understand or situate um, whatever has been shared in the presentation. The fourth model, we'll be looking at mineral policy and development. Of all the various activities we've talked about in the previous models, they are all hinged on certain policies and legal framework within the countries that the activity is taking place. Every country, every resource rich country has its own set of um, legal framework, which also include the fiscal regime and all that, that governs the activities of mining operations to ensure that mining activities or resource extraction is done within a confined um, framework or within a confined governing body to ensure that the activities, the environment, social and economic impact, the gains, everything can be controlled so that um, all stakeholders know their roles, they know their obligations and all that. So here you will be exposed to the development and the revision of mining policy. That's um, the revision because of, um, maybe you have a mining policy already, but some gaps have been identified, which um, some stakeholders are, are taking advantage of um, and causing maybe revenue leakages or moving around it to undermine efforts made in the, being made to promote local content, or maybe some loopholes that give room to environmental degradation without holding the company responsible. So that will call for revision of the existing uh, mining policy, and this goes on every now and then. There are times that the existing law has been repealed altogether to bring in a new law based on the contextual realities that is prevailing at the time. We also want to ex um, expose stakeholders to the various issues that were identified in the previous models, how to incorporate them in the development of a mining policy. So one, we'll be looking at the context because before any policy is, is, is developed, of course, the context really matters. That's why it is not advisable, it is not recommended to just pick somebody's policy, some, a, a certain country maybe in the West and just import it to your context without any adjustment because we have contextual um, differences that may not allow the visibility of the imported policy. So we will look at the context, the fundamentals for a relevant mineral policy, the processes, the policy outcomes, and of critical essence is the implementation plan. There should be a plan, how, and including an action plan, at what time do we do this, at what time do we do that? So all these um, will be exposed to, to enhance or give you a deeper understanding of the policy development processes. Our fifth model is extractive policy and regulatory framework in West Africa. Apart from country specific policies, mineral policies, we also have um, policies that governs the region. If you take it from the region, from the African level, we even have the African mining vision. But the focus of this one, this particular model, will be on the ECOWAS region which will take care of the various um, common specific policies developed by the ECOWAS to govern the management of natural resources in natural in resource rich economies within the ECOWAS region. So here we will look at the region and the, how it is politically organized around the ECOWAS. We also look at some of the countries that are rich in natural resources we will also look at um, how the, the issue of the paradox of the plenty, where resource-rich uh, countries or resource-rich economies are well endowed with so much, and yet poverty prevails even more than those countries that are not um, blessed 
with such natural resources. The very last one, which is model six, we'll be discussing after going through all these models, seeing, um, talking about the mind life cycle, what it entails, looking at the opportunities and the various um, um, gaps and talking about the environmental impact, social and economic impact, talking about how to develop the mineral policy with considerations to um, regional policies within the ECOWAS region. It is important to also discuss or know the role of stakeholders within the mining sector. We have several stakeholders, but we'll be limiting it to the key ones. That's the private sector. Usually the private sector is the private companies, which when you look at broadly at the large scale sector, you in Africa, usually the, the, the multinational companies, you don't usually find um, local companies undertaking large scale um, mining in our context. But then you find more local companies rather at the ASM level. So we'll be looking at the role of the private sector. We're looking at the role of government, the role of the civil society, which includes civil society organizations within the extractive community-based organizations. Now the community-based organizations are very critical because they are on the ground, they are in the community and they interface directly with the impact of the mining activity. And we have NGOs. The fourth key um, um, stakeholder institution we also want to pay attention to are the international organizations. So um, that will bring us to the end um, of our course, that's model six, is the end of the course. And um, you will also have the opportunity to undertake um, some quizzes, you know, after going through each model, you will have to answer some questions to test your understanding of what you have learned. And you also have the opportunity to share your questions. Um, we will be available to provide responses to any clarity you may seek. So um, once again, I want to welcome you to the course Fundamentals of Natural Resource Governance. We are very happy to have you and feel free to participate, share, interact with your colleagues, interact with us, leave your comments, leave your questions, and we will be available to respond to you. I wish you all the best and I wish you